reaction to another chemical engineering video. Um, this time we are going to move on to um, single phase system. Um, these have to do uh, the these questions tend to be about dealing with the non ideality of gases. And uh, it's a very realistic approach, you know, the good old ideal gas model. It's nice when you're in high school, but uh, it's not going to make the cut, unfortunately, in chemical engineering. So we we gotta we gotta make up for that non-ideality of gases. And in chemical engineering, we have developed a whole dozen ways of trying to estimate um, the data empirically. And you'll find it in your textbook, all these different uh, methods of, of doing a whole bunch of um, series. There's that method you can do. Or uh, SRK method, cube method, etc. Uh, there's also the um, Z method using the data chart. Um, you won't really need to know every single method. You should probably know two methods. That and one of them should definitely be the uh, Z is equal to PV over RT method. Uh, that tends to be the most time efficient method in, uh, in solving these uh, single phase systems. Now today here I've made up a question um, and it's a very short story. It's uh, you have a rigid cylinder and um, uh, they want to know what is the temperature in this uh, cylinder um, containing a certain amount of, e of um, pro propene and um, yeah maybe maybe it's in a lab and maybe it's not safe to be stored there and it's breaking the Wimis, Wimis rule so uh, yeah there's some Chi 291 for you uh, but in seriousness yeah um, you have propene and on my screen here uh, in yellow you can see I have all I have all the data that would be necessary to solve the problem. Uh, uh, yeah, and obviously the question full details written out will be in the description of the video. So, without further ado, we are going to start uh, crunching those numbers. Okay. So, um, first thing you want to do, okay, after reading this question, is you, you gotta you gotta think of your method. What are you missing? What do you do have? What do you don't have? So maybe when you started doing your homework, you probably got, you know, you might have done some easy ones and it's like, oh yeah, just find pressure reduced, temperature reduced, find, use my chart, done. Find my Z, done. Easy. Um, sometimes though, that's, uh, not sometimes, it's probably general indication you're not going to get that on a test. You, you're definitely going to have to know, uh, it won't be that simple, uh, it won't be as straightforward, so you have to sometimes work around things to find in order to find things you're missing. And this question really highlights that. So we are given, okay, molar mass, nice. We're giving a certain amount of mass in the vessel, 0 0.83 kilograms. We are given um, the critical temperature, 91.06 Celsius. We're giving the uh, critical pressure. Uh, I just want to make tell you all, this number here is not, um, it's not based on anything real. So in real life, this is actually in bars, but for the purpose of the question, just plug in the number. Uh, and the volume of our cylinder is 0.3 meters cubed. And the pressure in our vessel is 110 kPa. Okay. So with all of this, okay, uh, pressure reduced. Yeah, we got a PC, we got a P vessel. Easy. We're going to find some pressure reduced. So obviously the equation for pressure reduced is simply the pressure of the vessel divided by the critical pressure of the um, compound, uh, propene. And that gives you a pressure reduce of 2.415. Okay. Um, okay. So now you say, okay, so let's see, uh, let's do temperature reduced. Okay. So we got our critical temperature of 91.06 Celsius. And oh man, isn't that unfortunate? We have no other detail about the temperature in the cylinder. Actually, the question even said that's what we wanted to find in the, in the system. So obviously, we're not that lucky. We're not going to get the TR. Okay. Uh, we are given a volume, so hmm, maybe maybe there's something we can work with that. Okay, 
So we have moles, uh, 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 mass, pardon, and we have our molar mass. So yeah, obviously in every chemistry question, I think you always find moles, okay? And if you do the math, you do 0 0.83 kilograms divided by the molar mass, you simply get 0 0.01976 moles of um, propene, okay? Next part, we're going to find V hat. Now V hat is the volume of the substance uh, per a uh, molar, ba uh, molar basis. And if you simply take 0 0.3 meters cube divided by the number of moles we found, we get that, w that we have 15.228 uh, um, meters cube per mole. Okay, now obvious, all the time you always think of PR, TR, but there's always the VR. And sometimes that's kind of forgotten by some students. Um, it's a bit more complicated than simply PR and, PR and TR to solve. So you definitely got to remember that for, uh, equation for it. So the equation in this case for the volume reduced is is a pressure reduced times the m uh, molar volume divided by the R constant times the temperature. And if you do the math, uh, you will get 0 0.229 um, me yeah okay. Um, however, I'll just make sure that uh, uh, it didn't really show it, but T here is actually um, the temperature cr uh, critical, okay? And that temperature critical is in kelvins, okay? This is always done in kelvins when we're doing these system of units. Okay, so now what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to open up your book and you're gonna go to those compressibility charts. And uh, yeah, they can definitely be a pain to read, especially when you're stressed out on a test, okay? But uh, um, take your time, just double check it twice, okay? Try and line it up. Now with the data given, we have two bits of info, okay? A chart always has two degrees of freedom, the y and the x-axis. In this case, uh, the x-axis is the um, PR, and the y is well, it's sort of the VR. It's it can also be TR. It that's just the way the chart is. But in this case, it's VR other degree of freedom, and you line up with 2 0.229 with 2.415. And if you do that, I got 0 0.45. Um, don't think oh no, I'm gonna be uh, 0.03 off. It's gonna mess up everything. Your professor will definitely allow a range of answers, and that. That he, that should work no matter what. Uh, if you're across a chart, then you're you yeah you're not gonna get it right. But if you're good enough to have everything properly calculated, you'll get your answer. I guarantee it. Okay. Okay. So we have our compressibility factor. Easy. Now we just use our rearrange our equation uh, for the compressibility factor. So the rearrange equation is temperature is equal to the pressure of the vessel in this case, times the volumetric vol uh, uh, volume on the molar basis divided by the um, constant, gas constant, uh, and the gas constant is times uh, multiplied by the uh, compressibility factor. And here you just plug in the numbers that we've just found all above, okay? And you should get 447.94 Kelvin. And that, if you use the um, sig figs, should be two sig figs, and you should get 4.5 times 10 to the two Kelvin, okay? So, this is one method of solving this question. There are longer, more arduous methods, but if your professor does not specifically say, I need to, uh, I need, I want you to solve it this way, you'll be okay. Now, um, I don't think, in my personal experience, he has never said, guys, I need you to know every single method, and I'm going to pick one of the methods for you to solve, okay? He's never done that for in our case, and I doubt he'll do it with you. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much uh, single phase system and how to deal with the non-ideality factor, okay? Um, so after this you should be comfortable using the, the charts. Now there's two of the, there's two different charts depending on the range of values. You gotta be able to get in there quickly. Uh, you need to understand all the these adjustments to the um, ideal gas law formula and um, you gotta be able to read your question and say, okay, I have this and this and this. Okay, I can solve it this. Um, questions are really, this is not too bad.
Okay. So I wish you the best. Goodbye.